DC fans, how could we have been so blind? The prophecy was written right in front of us. Now what you're gonna see here is why the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. Let us now lick the head of Dwayne Johnson to absorb his knowledge. Hello DC fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. We have a lot of news concerning the future of the DC Cinematic Universe. Unless you've been living under a rock lately or just don't like to keep up with a lot of the behind the scenes movie news, you might not have heard that Discovery has bought out Warner Brothers. Last week, the $43 billion deal was finalized and now only a week later, we are starting to see some of the ramifications that Discovery is having on Warner Brothers, specifically, their DC Cinematic Universe. So what I'm going to do here for you guys is breaking down all the details involved with this, telling you exactly what Discovery plans to do to hopefully revitalize DC, giving you my opinion on what they should do, but it's not just going to be about me. I need you guys in the comment section, leave me your own thoughts and theories on what DC needs to do for the future. Because, man, it, we're in a sticky place right now. All right, so jumping right into it here, yesterday an article with Variety came out titled Warner Brothers Discovery Exploring Overhaul of DC Entertainment. Now, although the article is not particularly long, there is still a lot of information in here to what Discovery plans to do to kind of go ahead and bring back DC into the spotlight. They have it here that David Zalas, the CEO of the combined companies and top leadership, have been toying with the idea of turning DC into its own solidified content vertical stating here exactly that the move would potentially affect DC future film development in Warner Brothers picture group streaming service at Warner Brothers television and the creative arms within DC proper all in an effort to have the desperate elements more closely aligned in order to maximize the value of the superhero stable one often seen as a punch-up against Marvel and right there as a DC fan that should actually be really exciting news to you that Discovery has this mindset for DC because one of the mind-blowing things about DC versus Marvel is that Marvel is their own studios. They are Marvel Studios. In the same way Blumhouse and A24 are their own studios dedicated to making movies, that is what Marvel is over here as well, a dedicated powerhouse to just making films based off their IPs, while DC is not a studio. They're just a little small subsection in Warner Brothers' larger properties. And here Discovery seems to be having the mindset that yes, DC should be its own studio, pumping out content and making us billions of dollars, which I agree. And one of the first steps they're going to take towards making this a reality is getting themselves a Kevin Feige. <laughs> You're in the article, it states, Before the merger closed, Zalas vetted candidates with experience in creating and nurturing blockbuster intellectual property with a goal of potentially finding someone to serve as a creative strategic czar similar to what Marvel has in Kevin Feige. And no freaking dur, okay? I think you could walk up to any DC fan and ask them, Hey, what do you think DC does wrong that Marvel is doing right? And nine times out of ten, they would probably answer with... They need a Kevin Feige. Yet DC and Warner Brothers have really struggled to find that. And look, it's really a lot easier said than done. I know right now in my comment section of this video, there's people right now going, Zack Snyder should be the head of everything. James Gunn should be the head of everything. Matt Reeves or David F. Sandberg. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. Nope, 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 nope. That is nothing against those directors. They are extremely talented people and I love their work. But at the end day, these guys are directors. What DC wants wants is someone that can not only oversee plans for a cinematic universe, but their television side of things, their video games. Basically a businessman or a producer per se, like Kevin Feige. Cause look, going down the list, I'm a Zack Snyder fan, okay? I think Man of Steel is underrated and one of the best Superman movies ever made. Was not the biggest fan of Batman vs Superman admittedly, but his version of the Justice League I fell in love with. However, knowing his plans for the future of the DCEU where it was gonna end with Ben Affleck, Batman dying and Lois Lane giving birth to Batman's kid, a whole side plot involving a nightmare universe where Superman is working alongside Darkseid. Really, that is not the cinematic universe I was yearning for, just this ultimate gritty world. Plus, financially on paper, Zack Snyder is not the most favorable guy to have on Warner Brothers' side. It sucks to say it, but the lead up and planning that he was doing with the DCU was bringing in less and less money. Because the plans he put forward from Man of Steel all the way to Justice League and then having Justice League, your team-up movie, 
be the least earning film in your series, you're doing something wrong. And I know fans will go ahead and attack me and say, Chris, that's because it was the Joss Whedon cut. If Zack Snyder went ahead and released his original cut, it would have made a billion dollars. Sadly, no. The reason that happened is because movie after movie, Zack was kind of alienating the general audiences and making them show up less. Also, there was no way Warner Brothers would have released the four hour cut. That is the masterpiece cut. They would have forced him to cut an hour minimum to make it three hours to release in theaters, making that film very sloppy and ending up with the same results. So again, I like Zack Snyder. I respect the man. I'm happy he's at Netflix doing what he does and I can't wait to see Rebel Moon, but he's not necessarily what the DCEU needs. And then even going down with someone like James Gunn, he has said he has no interest in doing these larger character movies. He turned down Superman because he would rather go ahead and give the spotlight to lesser known characters and make fun and creative movies based off there. He doesn't want to run an entire universe of thousands of characters. David F. Sandberg, the director of Shazam, also talked about the same thing, that he would never direct a Superman movie because he's scared of the fan base. I mean, some of y'all DC fans be scary and I don't blame him. So if he doesn't even want to do that, he's not going to want to go ahead and create a cinematic universe and Matt Reeves you guys know I love the Batman right now Robert Pattinson is my favorite Batman and I can't wait to see his spin-off TV series but again as much of a genius as that man is he has said in interviews he doesn't want to bring fantastical elements to a lot of these characters even when he was asked if he could bring in Superman into the Robert Pattinson world he says he doesn't see how that character could fit into the universe with all the fantasy elements and I'm sorry but I would want a DCEU with fantasy elements magic characters time travel lots of unexplainable stuff stuff it kind of sucks when everything is always trying to be too realistic so you need someone like kevin feige who thinks like a businessman and that's i think why they're struggling to find someone because they say here in the article one insider suggested that zalas was less interested in finding a creative guru and more eager to hire someone who had the type of business background needed to keep all different factions of dc working more harmoniously and i think yeah that probably is extremely hard to find and why they still haven't gotten there yet however that is what discovery is looking for right now hopefully they find it and once they do and get this person their next step is discovery believes that several top shelf characters such as superman have been left to languish and need to be revitalized Thank you, Discovery. Speaking as someone who was born in the mid 90s and basically grew up on Warner Brother DC characters, stuff from the Justice League animated series, Justice League Unlimited, Teen Titans, a lot of us were basically bred for the future DC EU cinematic universe. And I remember being a kid and seeing the Avengers starting to form together and going, what is the Avengers? I only know the Justice League. How are you going to pair someone up like Iron Man next to Thor, next to Cat America and Black Widow? That doesn't really make sense in my head. Because in my mind, the legends were Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Flash, Wonder Woman. Those were like holy legends for me. So it was always weird to me growing up that I would then see trailers for movies like Watchmen. Don't get me wrong. I understand Watchmen is a masterpiece and a great graphic novel to a lot of people. But how do you get a movie for Watchmen before you put out a Green Lantern or a Flash movie or a Wonder Woman movie. Like seriously, how did we get a Suicide Squad movie before a Flash movie? And this is what Discovery is wanting to do is Superman is like the most iconic superhero there is. Whether he's your favorite or not, they know Superman should be top tier gold standard and be having movies as much as Batman is. Whether that means bringing back Henry Cavill, which I would love that, or continuing on with their Black Superman movie that they have planned and the Black Superman TV show for HBO Max with Michael B. Jordan attached is yet to be unseen, but I wouldn't be surprised if when Discovery gets a hold of all that, they scrap it and reboot the character. But from there, we follow into the next step of their plan, because even if they go ahead and revitalize Superman and reboot him, it's not going to be a reboot of the DC Cinematic Universe. They say here, they also believe that projects like Todd Phillips' Joker are shining examples of how second-built characters from DC Library can and should be exploited, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is another example. This is, I think, why it's so hard to find a Kevin Feige-like person for them, because they not only want someone to build a cinematic universe, 
They also want someone that can do spin-off standalone movies that don't connect to anything while also simultaneously releasing a connected universe and explaining that to the audience. That already is a tough task, but I can't blame Discovery for wanting to do that when the Joker, a rated R movie, made a billion dollars. So although we might see them try to fix their cinematic universe, the standalone movies that are connected to nothing are not going to be done with. They are still going to try and do them and yeah, I kind of like that. That's something DC will have over Marvel. Standalone movies where you don't have to watch a whole bunch of other films in the background to then understand this new one. So okay, now that we have that information and we know that these are the steps that Warner Brothers wants to take, the next question we gotta ask ourselves is, when does this take into effect? Because we have the Flash movie up and coming and all the controversies and things going on with that film. It is still the all in for Warner Brothers where they are hoping that movie works out because it's going to explain their entire DC universe, both their connected universe and why you have multiverses with standalone films like the Batman. That movie's coming out next year and I just don't think these plans are going to be taking place or in effect. We are going to see these changes come in 2024 and 2025 and I would just hate for them to kind of haphazardly try and fit it in with the universe they have going on when well, let's just admit it as much as we love people like Gal Gadot, Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, Zachary Levi as Shazam, I think hitting the reset button and trying to start fresh is the best course of action as much as it's gonna hurt to see those characters go. Still that is the information we got right now that Discovery and Warner Brothers are planning. I think it's a real promising start but I mean actions speak louder than words. So I throw it off to you guys now that you hear that they basically want to go ahead and find a Kevin Feige focus on their legendary characters like Superman and try and bring them back to the spotlight while also still trying to do standalone movies separated from cinematic universes. Is this the correct way to go for DC or do you think something else should be done? Anything, everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.